Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at texturing in TextMesh Pro. More specifically, how to apply a texture to the face or the outline of our text. So let's begin by uh, getting rid of this current text object. We're going to start with a new one. So we're going to go to Create, TextMesh Pro. I'm going to select the object. I'm going to change the font to Impact. Uh, I'm going to reset this material so it's back to plain white text. I'm going to pick a center alignment and I'm going to change the text. Um, okay, now let me add some uh, word wrapping, adjust the line length. And what I'm looking for right now is just I want to have like three or four lines of text of different length and this is good. Okay, now the reason I switched to impact is for this video I'm looking for, obviously I want to show the texturing uh, features, so I'm looking for a font that would be thick enough to you know allow us to see more of the texture and impact is really nice, Arial is kind of a little bit skinny so it's not as uh, nice to work with in terms of texturing which is why I switched to font. So let's begin by applying a texture on this font. Uh, I'm in terms of where we would apply the texture. So in our normal uh, Text Mesh Pro Sign Distance Field shader, we can apply a texture to the face of our text or to the outline. In this video, we'll only focus on the face. Uh, the same options apply for outline. So we're going to pick a texture. Now this texture is not going to be pretty uh, to look at because it's a UV grid, which will enable us to get a better feel for what's going on. So here I'm zooming into this word so we can take a look at what's happening here. Okay, so as you can see, the texturing options, if you go, if you look at font settings, we have UV mapping options, character and character. So basically this is for your horizontal mapping and then for your vertical mapping. So right now we've selected character, character, which means the texture is applied per character. So this UV grid goes from A01 to A10, and then down there it goes to J. So if we look at it, if I zoom in a little bit more, we can see this is the grid A01, goes all the way to 10. Now the T here, there's transparent stuff, but we can see that the J10 would be here. In the case of the H, you know, we can see goes from A01 to basically J10. Now the I is narrower, so we can still see though from A01 down to J10. And that's basically what per character does. Now if we were to switch to per line, now we can see that the A01 is here on this line. And if I was to go to the end of that line, we can see that the 10 is here. Now if the last character of this line was like a a character with a descender like a J or something, then we would say the C to 10 down there to J10. But what's important to look at, let me change the texture uh, to make it easier to visualize. I will pick a gradient from left to right. Now if we look in this mode, we can see that this texture is applied per line horizontally, which means it goes from the orange to basically yellow back to orange. Now the second line is longer, so the gradient is applied again from the first character of the line to the last character of the line and the same thing for the last line. Okay, so you can see here the gradient does map across the line itself. Now the next mode is per paragraph. Now in this case the gradient is applied from the first character or the left side up to the most right side character and it basically maps it across each different lines. So if I go back to uh, our UV grid, actually let me pick a different one, which will be this one here, we can see that this texture, which is sort of a gradient, goes from the top white in this corner here to basically the darker portions right there, and it's applied across the entire character. Now let's switch and look at the vertical options. We're going to go back to our UV grid which is right here. I'm going to go back to per character and I will go to line. So actually I did that a little bit too fast. Let me go back to per character. So per character we can see that the texture is mapped from top to bottom of each letter. But if I had a J here 
then the texture would be mapped from the top going all the way down here. And if we look at this, we can see uh, these are pretty close, but if you look at the S, the grids are not necessarily aligned. That's because this letter is not at the same height, both vertically, like it's, it goes a little bit lower these, uh, and it starts at different heights. So these things don't necessarily align. Like these appear to be kind of aligned, but with the S we can see the difference. Now when I choose vertical alignment for line, now we can see that the grid is totally aligned for each of those. And actually if I was to put that J that I made a reference to, now we can see that again all of our grids align. So vertically we go from top to bottom and it's aligned through all the different objects. So the best way again to visualize this option is to go and pick a vertical gradient this time which is this, and now we can really observe that our texture goes from the tallest character to the shortest character or lowest descender and spreads it from that and for each line it repeats this process. And that's the option per line. Now per paragraph is the same thing, now it maps it, sorry I didn't show the last line, so per paragraph it applies it from the top to the bottom and now we have our full gradient. So if I was to switch to back to this other texture we were using, which is this one here, and switch paragraph, paragraph, now we can see that the entire texture, whoops, I didn't mean to make that go away. If we look at this texture here, we can see that this entire texture is mapped across the entire object, both horizontally and vertically. So when you have this mode in, then you can do stuff like, um, me pick something that might be, uh, no, that was bad. Um, just looking for some image here that might be interesting to look at. And I should have uh, looked at where my images are to begin with. So in this case, I mapped an image. Let me adjust character spacing just to make this easier to notice. Now we can't read the text because it's all garbled but you can see that we have one texture here and you can see how it's mapped across all the characters. If I squish all of them, take, whoops, word wrapping comes in, I forgot about that. So if I squish all of them, we can see that we have one single image that's being mapped across all characters. So with these options, you can do some pretty cool nifty stuff. Um, and that's basically it for my video. Um, should you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, uh, post. Thanks for watching.